So did you know that most of those soaps that you see in stores are not actually soaps? Me neither, until I started making soap and getting into it. So let's get into it. <laughs> My name is Jesse Whittington and I own Country Lather Soap Works on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I'm a seasoned soap maker, seasoned, and I've been making soap for almost nine years. So whether you are at the Piggly Wiggly, the HEB, the Kroger, the Dollar Holler, Save-A-Lot, or the, your local Walmart or Target, no doubt there is a whole aisle full of nothing but what we all have thought are soaps. There's boxes and boxes lined across the shelves and we think all of them are soaps and you would be wrong. Most of them are actually what are called detergent bars. On the box it will say cleansing bar or conditioning bar or something along those lines. Unless it actually says soap, it is not soap. So if you're like me, you grew up using like Zest, Lever 2000, Dove, Ivory, and the good old Irish Spring. That was upside down. Irish Spring. So why is it so serious? Well if you're like me, when you get out of the shower after using a bar like this you itch terribly and I did that all my life I thought everybody itched when I got out of the shower until one day my mom brought me a bar of luxury goat milk soap and I did not itch anymore and y'all the soap nerds coming out in me but it was like a light bulb moment so soap is not a new concept soap has been around for ages y'all it's recorded as early as 2500 BC in ancient Egypt in the Sumerian time period is the earliest recorded time where soap has been used. And to start with, it was primarily used for like laundry. They washed their garments with it. Later on, they started adding soda as a laundry additive, is what we would call it today, and it worked even better. Fast forward a few millennium, and we are in the middle of the 18th century, and detergent surfactants are becoming a thing. They're being explored but they don't really become prominent until World War I. And then they're still kind of not prominent. So during World War I, there was a shortage of oils and fats and such as that. A lot of those were kind of reserved to be used in, I'm guessing, food production and such as that. So during World War I, soap was in short supply because those oils were used for other things. And another cleansing agent was needed. So during that time, there were chemists in Germany that were trying to find other alternatives, although most of those were unsuccessful. But in the 1930s, they were able to find something, a, they were able to come up with a synthetic detergent that did not form a hard soap scum like soap does when it comes in contact with hard water. And in 1932, some commercial detergents were being sold by Hinkle in Germany. And later on in 1933, Procter & Gamble picked them up and started production in the U.S. And in the 1950s, laundry detergent replaced soap in the laundry industry. And it was during that time and around the 1950s or so when we actually started seeing cleansing bars, detergent bars and such as that actually hit the shelves and being marketed for body use. Fun fact, ever wondered where the term soap opera came from instead of just daytime drama? Well, back when they first started, their sponsors were toiletry companies, soap companies, and such as that. So that's how come they started being called soap operas, because their sponsors were soap companies. Squirrel! Anyhow, to get back to it. So what is the difference between a soap bar and a detergent bar? Well, basically a soap bar is, is all natural soap. A detergent bar is full of synthetic detergent type ingredients. Both of them will wash you, but the detergents tend to be a little bit more stripping and drying on your skin. And in my case, you end up itching when you get out of the shower. Now, whether you like good old-fashioned soap, this bull crap, or this stuff right here, it's completely up to you. You've got all kinds of choices. Me, I'm a soap nerd, and I will use this from now on. It does well with my skin, and I have lots of customers that have agreed with me that they don't itch when they get out of the shower anymore. And that itch is due to these things right here. So while we're in it, let's break down the ingredients in this bar. And is it soap or is it not soap? This is Irish Spring Aloe. And I will screenshot and put the ingredients right in here somewhere on this screen. We've got as an ingredient in this bar, 
The first ingredient is soap. Why would soap be an ingredient? And in parentheses behind soap, it says sodium toluate and or sodium palmate, sodium cocoate and or sodium palm kernelate. Which what that means is the soap in this soap is a mixture of different saponified oils. My guess is, is it would be a soap that is made out of the oil that is the cheapest at that market at that time. Now this particular bar, there ain't no telling what's in it. This thing's about five years old. Water. We all know what water is. Glycerin. Fun fact. Did you know that glycerin is a natural byproduct of saponification? So when you make a bar of soap, it already has glycerin in it. Why would glycerin be an ingredient in this soap, which means it's put into the soap? Because they take the glycerin, which the glycerin that's produced during saponification is top shelf, fantastic stuff. So instead, they take the glycerin out of the soap and they put a cheaper glycerin in it. Now, there's two main forms of cheap glycerin. You've got a vegetable glycerin, which is primarily made from soybean, corn, and palm, or it's probably a mixture of all three. You also have a synthetic glycerin, which is petroleum-based, cheaply made. Hydrogenated tallow acid, fancy word for an animal fat. It's a conditioning agent. Sodium chloride, fancy word for salt. It makes the bar a little harder. And that's what she said. Petrolatum is a fancy word for petroleum jelly or KY jelly. Polyquaternarium 6. Polyquaternarium 6 is a polymeric quaternary ammonium salt of diolephidimethyl ammonium chloride or DADMAC. That's a mouthful. It's an antistatic. It's a film former. It's used in a lot of cosmetic products as a conditioning agent. On to the next thing. Allobardinesis and leaf juice. It has aloe vera extract in it of some form or fashion. Pentasodium pentatate. And I believe that's a stabilizer. Yes, it's a stabilizer. For what? I have no clue. Titanium dioxide, that's a whitening agent. It's a little controversial. Um, it's a colorant, it's a whitening agent. Me personally, I don't use it in any of my products. Ultramarines, iron oxides, yellow five lake, blue one lake, those are all colorants. And of course it has fragrance, which is not a big deal so long as it is added responsibly and adheres to the IFRA guidelines or as us in the soap making community, we just call them IFRA. So in a nutshell, this is bullcrap. That box has been thrown a lot. I highly recommend using just good old fashioned regular soap. Thank you for watching. If you're a soap nerd like me, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way that you know every time I upload. Drop me a comment on what you'd like to see next here on the channel. Hit that thumbs up button, but as always, the best way to support Country Lather Soap Works is to go to countrylathersw.com and buy some soap, guaranteed to wash your stank off. Y'all know I love y'all, and God bless y'all. That poor bar of soap has been through it, literally.